What a bougie! Hello Leprechaun, welcome back. In today's episode we're going to be talking about the importance of exercise within psychosis recovery. I'm going to be going over why exercise is important in mental health recovery. Following that, I'm going to be giving you some examples on how to motivate yourself to do exercise. And finally, I'm going to tell you what are the best exercises to do for me and for you. So, why is exercise important for people with psychosis? You see, psychosis is a uh, brackets mental illness. You know what that means? It means that your brain is not healthy. <gasps> you may be thinking then, oh, I need to work focus on my mental health then, rather than my physical health. But see, the mind, the body, and the spirit, they're all interconnected. By making yourself physically healthy, and mentally healthy, and spiritually healthy, you'll be able to recover from your mental illness. <laughs> if you divide this evenly, it'd be a third for each segment, physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. So, 33.33333333% of that recovery should be focused on your physical health. Even more importantly, for people with psychosis and schizophrenia, is they tend to have lower dopamine receptor levels. Now this is before they get put on antipsychotic medication. A little bit of context is because people with psychosis and schizophrenia have got lower dopamine levels, what antipsychotic medication typically does is instead of it bringing up your dopamine levels, it actually brings down all of your other levels of energy. So if you imagine every single of the chemical inside of your body is going down, but then your dopamine level is also going down even more. So you've still got a chemical imbalance there. That's one reason for me for not taking the antipsychotic medication. If you are on antipsychotic medication, however, you will know that it is draining. I've taken it before. And your energy levels while on antipsychotic medication, bam, they're so low. It's so hard to actually encourage yourself to do any exercise. Fuck encouraging. It's hard to just do exercise. Your body is more tired and your mind is more tired. And if you're on antipsychotic medication, then my heart really does go out to you. If this is the case for you, then I have some exercises for you that you will find more, much easier to do. But we'll get back at that in a minute. Back to the why. Why is it important for us to do exercise? Exercise is important because remember those low dopamine receptors? Well, exercise actually gives you more dopamine. <laughs> Whenever you are doing any exercise, you get that dopamine hit. You know, some people describe it as the runner's high. And also, some people describe the runner's high as a myth. But you know what that is? It means they're not getting that dopamine hit from that type of exercise. So you need to experiment with other exercises. Nice. There's so many different exercises out there that you have available to try. Even without equipment, without going to the gym at home, by spending 10 pounds, you can get a pull-up bar. That gives you access to like 30% of the gymnastic equipment. You can learn to do press-ups, you can run, you can cycle if you get a bike, you can row, you can swim in the sea, in the river, that's free. So many exercises you can do. But the important thing is not what exercise you do, but that you do the exercise. Now, here's some tips on how to actually get yourself to exercise. Motivation, honestly, I believe it's a myth. If you ever heard of Ali Abdal, the YouTuber, this guy, he's class. He's got a Skillshare class on productivity and his belief that motivation is a myth comes from this diagram. So you have the thought and then you have the action. In the middle, you have the motivation. However, if you have the thought and then you look for the motivation, you're gonna be constantly going in a circle without reaching the action. If you skip the motivation and just go from the thought straight to the action, that way you're able just to do it immediately. So here are some techniques that I do in order to get myself to do exercise. 
For example, today, I did a high intensity workout, a HIIT workout. This workout is not for the faint hearted, honestly, but I didn't want to do this workout today. But I knew that I would enjoy it if I was doing it. So what did I do? First of all, I stuck on some music. Some music to get me in that energy, in that mood, in the zone. Step two then, I got my yoga mat and I threw it outside. Step three then, I filled up my glass of water and I brought it outside. And then, step four, I sat down on the mat and I did some stretches. Now, I did forget the important step of actually putting on the exercise gear. See, once you do these five steps, right? Putting on the exercise gear, putting on the music, getting the mat outside, doing your stretches and then just going all forward before you even realizing that you're doing the exercise without the motivation. And the best way to follow through with the exercise once you've started it is to say to yourself, I'm going to make this as enjoyable as possible. You can make your exercise fun. If you want, you can do some dancing like this. <laughs> Dancing gets your endorphins level fucking through the roof, man. And the best part about dancing is in your own house, when no one can see you, you can dance as ridiculous as possible and it's fucking class. So how to get yourself into that mood of doing that exercise is take it one step at a time. Just keep on taking those one steps until before you realize it, you're in the middle of a workout and you're enjoying it. Physical exercise is quite often more of a mental challenge than a physical challenge. It's just getting yourself outside of the door to take those first steps. So take small, tiny steps, small micro steps, and then you'll make those macro moves. Now, here's what exercises are best for you to do, particularly if you are in a psychosis recovery, like myself. So the number one best exercise for you to do within psychosis recovery is walking. Walking is so therapeutic. See, whenever my voices were going 90, speaking flat out, three, four voices speaking over each other, sitting inside of the house and listening to them is just the worst thing you can do. You get lost inside of this dark, dirty, devil-like jungle of hallucinations and it just sends your mood spiraling. It's fucking awful. If you're in that situation, then literally just tie your shoelaces right now and go walk. Walk as long as you can. Now that I have fairly successfully recovered from my psychosis, what I have found is best for me is to do two types of walks. So in the morning or during the day, I typically do a mindful walk. So if you don't know what a mindful walk is, it is basically where you have no headphones, no distractions. What you do is you pay attention to every single footstep that you make. You pay attention to the feel of your foot touching the ground, the feel of the wind blowing on your face, the smell of the fresh air that's going on around you and just embrace all of your five senses focusing on each footstep by mindfully walking especially in the nature you become aware of so much around you whether that's the leaves falling off the trees or the birds tweeting Mindfully walking, it really distracts you from the voices as well. My second walk then, which I do at night time, is my podcast walk. Other exercises that are really beneficial to do if you're on your psychosis recovery is ones that are focused on really aligning your body together. So in particular, what we want to focus on is the spine. We spend so much of our days sitting down and because of this, our back, our lower back in particular and our hips they're so tight and tell me this do you experience back pain the vast majority of us at such a young age experience back pain or neck pain because of 
how much our culture encourages us to sit all the time. Whether that's in work or coming home and relaxing in front of the TV, everything is just sitting. What's best for aligning your back is yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, or Qigong. So those four practices all are sort of spiritual as well. While you're focusing on these practices, once again, you focus on the breath and the mindfulness. And the more that you participate in these practices, you will actually find that your voices grow quieter and slower. And you can find more enjoyment in the process of the exercise. All those four exercises you can do quite slowly as well, so they're not too rigorous, not too harmful for your body. In fact, they are healthy for your body because it's aligning it. And if you are on antipsychotic medication, then you know your body gets tired easily, you know your mind gets tired easily, and so those practices are what I recommend for you to work with. They're what worked best for me. If you're looking for a more high intensity exercise, then these are more mental challenges as well. So they build you physically, mentally and spiritually. And so what I love to do is I love to run. I love to swim in the sea or in a lake. That's a lie, I don't swim in lakes. <laughs> Recently, I've also got into Taekwondo. Now, I'm only done my first training session, but I'm pretty confident I'm gonna get a black belt one day. Hadoo. Also, probably my favorite exercise of everything is trekking in the mountains, hiking. Hiking is such a spiritual exercise for me. The mental challenge, each footstep you take, going higher and higher, it's a beautiful thing. And then what I like to do also is I don't look back until I get to the top. Because once I get to the top then, the view around me is even more spectacular. It's fucking class, man. So that's why, how and what to do exercise. One last thing I have to add is what you really want to avoid is any contact sports. Uh -oh. I used to play a lot of contact sports. I used to play a lot of rugby and soccer and Gaelic football. All of these sports though, the head damage that they do could be causing you mental illness issues. If you really have to play them, then make sure you wear head protection. And now, this leads me on to my question for you, leprechauns. What exercise do you like to do? Simple question, simple answer. Write it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening, leprechauns. I will be seeing you soon. In the meantime, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, share it to a friend, and lots of love to you all. Slanga for. It's kind of crazy The kinds of things life throws at you I never knew I'd feel so safe in your eyes